What's up everyone, welcome back to Making Motor Moves. On today's episode, it's here. The Ski Boat's new engine has arrived and today we are gonna be dressing it and getting it ready to go back in the boat. It's raining outside, so we're working in the shop right now. But there's a few old parts that need to go back on this brand new 350 Chevy, performance intake, HEI distributor, hopped up cam, some uh, better roller rockers and lifters inside the engine. This thing should bake about 350 horsepower when it's all said and done. So let's get to it. My name is Ben. This is Making Motor Moves. Thanks for watching. Here we go. First things first, we're gonna throw the old flywheel and the coupler plate back onto the back of the engine. Yes, it's a little rusty. We might put some paint on it to get it black and shiny again, but you don't ever see it because it is covered up by the transmission that mounts on the back of the engine here. So it's gonna mount back here, flywheel, and then there's a coupler with a shaft that goes to our velvet drive one-to-one -one transmission that then goes to the prop shaft and then the propeller and hence what pushes the boat. But anyway, let's get this bolted up real quick and then we'll move to starter, which will go over here. And then my mess of accessories off the old engine for Marine. So pulley, water pump, my water pump impeller that sucks the water raw water I should say thermostat housing with my hoses I know they don't look pretty we're gonna clean them up I've got my exhaust manifolds and risers here these look new they're Sierra parts however which aren't the best and if you can look carefully you can see a little bit of shiny rust on the inside that means water is getting back into the uh, cylinder head, which is not good at all. And these knockoff cheaper risers and manifolds will do that. And that's not something we want. So this engine, to keep the warranty, will get brand new exhaust manifolds and risers. And it keep me from having to purchase a whole new engine and do this all over again. I think I just have to bite the bullet and buy new manifolds and risers. However, I can reuse those hoses and fittings and that'll be fine, the brass plugs. Edelbrock 650 CFM for my high rise intake. That'll go on today, hopefully. And then finally, I bought a new starter. Uh, the old one has seen some, some better days, but it still worked, it just, um, like I said, seen some better days. All right, this stuff is pretty uh, simple. I could put this on time lapse, but um, we might as well go like this. Easy enough. There it is. All right. Accessories mounted. Now time for the carb. We're gonna leave it there for tonight. I got the carburetor on, accessory drive, flywheel. Um, I wasn't able to put this on because I needed to get it back on its crate here. Um, but, oh, and the starter, it didn't fit. So maybe I have to use my old one or buy an old style one, or I can mount it on the transmission. There's a mounting point on the transmission, I'll show you that. But next time you guys see this, it's gonna be hanging in the air from the old John Deere and uh, getting ready to go in the boat and probably do its first test fire before we drop it in. But hmm, we'll see. All right, see you in a little bit.
All right, bring her down the rest of the way. All right. Sweet. It's back in. Nice. New engine is back in the boat. Woohoo! All right. What's up, everybody? So, I've really been neglecting the ski boat, but God, does it feel good to get it back in my driveway. I did that last night with the Bronco. Got her fired up, full tank of fuel. We got the pups chilling and I am actually really enjoying this corner seat yeah this will be a good spot to sit post or pre-skiing to slam a beer and then go for a rip behind the boat as you recall this is my 1991 Malibu Euro F3 competition ski boat that I bought last summer. Ran it twice, had horrendous blow-by, and figured out it needed a new engine. Hopped up cam, ported heads, high-rise intake, better carburetor, HEI distributor, brand new, Mer Cruiser. I mean, literally brand new from Mer Cruiser. Um, exhaust manifolds and risers. And then new water pump impeller, all the same dressing for the front of the engine. This engine should make about 350 horsepower and 400 or 385 foot pounds of torque. Stock, this thing made 260. And with all the blow by I had last summer, honestly is probably making less than 200 so and the boat ran pretty good then this is gonna be a beast I'm told from the engine builder she's gonna be choppy which will be pretty sweet I think if I can teach you anything. It's never owned two boats. But more importantly, never leave all your tools on the other boat that you're not working on when you need all those tools on the boat that you're working on. Okay. Now we got a good day and it's daylight out. Yeah, so finally we've got things buttoned up on the rebuilt brand new small block Chevy. Finally got this manifold and riser all hooked up, all the hoses hooked up, fuel line, correct adapter for my carburetor right here, fuel line coming off, the new fuel pump, new starter, Oh, here's my flush fitting that I'll hook up and that's how I run the boat on land. It shuts off that valve um, that way I can just pump water through the engine and don't need some like fake sea strainer on the bottom of the boat to have it draw water. But anyway, really looking good coming together. Now I need to break in the engine per the engine builders procedure which is in my truck I'm gonna go grab it but essentially it is like 30 minutes of running at like 2,000 to 3,000 rpm uh, monitoring all of my gauges oil pressure temperature um, and then once that's done change the oil change the oil filter 
and then I should be ready to go. I think we're gonna fire this up for the first time with its brand new engine, 350 horsepower, 400 foot-pounds of torque. This thing ought to be a ripper. Just another cool thing to accent. Um, I still need to hook up my throttle cable, uh, but it's got an HEI uh, distributor. Um, so no coil, coils built in on top. Um, did a little grounding and had some electrical hookups. New filters, new fuel filters, same alternator, it works. New risers and manifolds, same accessory drive and pulleys and whatnot. And the original Velvet one to one transmission is back there hooked up to my prop shaft, which is just a little guy. Comes out of the bottom of the boat Ugh, with my four blade propeller. I may need a new seal, probably, maybe, more than likely. Ugh. And uh, I'm curious to see with the new engine if I'm gonna need to change my propeller to something different. But here you guys can get a good idea how these boats are. I mean, they come off and they're, they're very flat in the back. And then uh, your straight shaft Direct drive, one-to-one, -one, and then a couple fins, pretty beefy brass fins up front to give you traction in the water. I mean, this thing's, this thing's a ripper. I'm going down the rabbit hole here. I didn't like my helm seat. It was clunky and gross and just really nasty and like falling apart and cracking and just disgusting. Look at this. There's stuff poking at it right and left. So I have made the executive decision to ditch this. And I just bought a new helm seat off Amazon. And I've also popped my box up. And look at these rusty old sliders. I'm gonna get rid of those and get new ones. I'm finding all sorts of goodies in this thing. I don't know what the MIMS is, but I gotta figure that out. There's some heater hose in here that goes in this silver box and then go down in the boat. I just traced them back and there's a... Oh, if I can get over here. You can see that maybe? There's a hose there that's cut off. So I'm assuming that used to tie into the engine. Maybe like from this fitting or something like that. And it was a heater because I have this over here. You can pull out, throw under a towel or something. I mean, that's pretty cool. So I think I'm gonna get that working again and hooked up. Also, now that I've got my captain's chair, oops, excuse me, now that I got my captain's chair removed, I found an amplifier. Look, I got another vent right here. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna remove this panel. So I can get to this amplifier, see if it's any good. That's wired up. Now I just gotta put my head unit back in. But I pulled this amplifier out of here. Woo. Easy. Yeah, this thing's junk. Junk, junk. So I'm gonna toss that. Probably get a new one. And uh, put a kicking stereo system in this boat later, but not today. Got the stereo in. All oh, my hanging wires have been cleaned up. And then our little vent fan area back here has been buttoned back up, but the amp is gone, so. Okay, so here is the break-in procedure for this engine from Mr. Herb, the engine builder. Um, but essentially, looks like put oil in the engines, make sure it's timed properly, make sure the fuel's fresh, make sure marine manifolds are replaced prior to installing the engine and starting it, brand new manifolds, um, new fuel, added zinc to the oil, and it looks like I have to fire it up and maintain 2,000 RPMs for 20 minutes so uh, I don't damage anything. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna fire it up, 
I'm running at 2,000 RPMs for 20 minutes. Watch oil pressure, watch temperatures, um, and then shut it off. Change the oil, and then it says, keep below 4,000 RPMs for first four hours of runtime. Seems pretty reasonable. Do not run engine at idle speed for more than three minutes, even after break-in period. That probably is a, a good note for most engines. Um, Idling is not good for them because they don't get nearly the amount of oil lubrication through all the components um, that they do at high RPMs. But anyway, besides the point, let's fire up. Pretty impressive. Thing just fired right up. That's amazing. Now manifolds are kind of normal temperature. What I was checking earlier was making sure I was getting oil. Which it looks like I am. Oil level's fine. <laughs> Alright. Check this out. <laughs> Alright. He's moving and grooving. Pressure good. I'm back her off just a touch. So here's a fun one. I decided to buy a new captain's chair. And you know what? This one's actually pretty freaking sweet. I'll show you guys once I get it out of the wrap, but it's got like a fold up bolster. It's the perfect size. Hey, quit, quit jacking around. Hey, what are you doing? What are you doing up there? Get down, come on. But uh, no, it's perfect size to fit right here by the helm, but I have to get the new slider brackets. I gotta get these installed onto here, and then my pattern width is slightly different than the old fiberglass base, which I'm gonna reuse. So all I'm gonna do is put spacers on there, drill new holes, that'll work for this seat, rather than destroying this seat, Trying to put screws where they don't go, just make it work that way.
Okay, I got the sliding base mounted on. I had to modify the poles or the holes in the chair just a little bit, or I should say on the brackets uh, to make this opening a little bit longer. But all good, those bolted up with the factory holes in the seat. Now I've got some hardware and this is gonna attach to my seat that I drilled new holes in. And the only thing I have to do is make up that gap that's there, as well as for the lifter latch. Look at my dog. Look at him. Sorry to interrupt, but he's literally just been sitting on this engine hatch. You like it there, dude? Goose. Yeah, buddy. Maybe you can sit there while we go for a boat ride later. That'd be pretty cool. All right, anyway, I got my spacers, spacers. That should give me enough clearance to clear the latch and uh, make it so the seat sits properly on my pad. So let's give that a go. What do you say? That actually worked out pretty nicely. And if I flip my latch, it's a bit easier when it's mounted before, but it's out. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, that's gonna be good. Sweet. Okay, found the spot. I'm gonna bolt it down. I can slide it all the way back here, and then I can slide this forward, lift my engine hatch up, no issues. Love it. Well, I don't know what we're waiting for. Let's hook this boat up. Go for our first sea trial with the new motor. There you have it, step one. She's on the water and she still floats. Now let's fire her up. Looks like it'll have a little bit of a shaft seal leak, but let's get it wet and um, rotating, see if that goes away. Remember, it's been uh, on land and dry for quite a while. But anyway, step two, let's fire it up, see if she runs. I need to, I need to adjust your idle. It sounds like. Give me one second. All right, she's rich. She's rich, and I need to go run her, adjust the carb. But all right, for right now, I'm gonna tilt this forward. Turn the blower on. Let me get the line and we'll get out of here. So this is gonna be my game. Adjustment, adjustment. Without it falling on its face and dying.
box. This is always fun, troubleshooting a boat that likes to die. Let's get out a little further from the dock. Okay, I had to advance the timing a little bit, and now I need to tighten it, and I forgot to bring a wrench with me, so I'm gonna go back and get a wrench, but the boat, much more responsive, comes right back to idle. Idling right at 800 RPM. Idle oil pressure 40, idle voltage 13, and I got no thermostat, so I'm running cold all the time. And this velvet drive, you gotta love it. Look at this, ready? Boom. Smooth as a whistle. But here you go. Very happy. Um, probably changed the oil once after the break in, but I'm gonna go for a quick rip. My name's Ben, this is Making Motor Moves. I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, like and subscribe if you haven't already, but glad you guys uh, got to be here for really what is a dream come true for me. Uh, I can finally get back into slalom water skiing, barefooting my gear I got the boom I got the high-rise pull I got the rope I got the water ski this is gonna be awesome all right guys take it easy Thank you. 